Hello and what's up everybody, Thunderbop here, and I am checking out Elden Ring. I realize I'm getting this a little bit late. Uh, I had some family stuff going on and really didn't get to start playing until Friday evening. I'm kind of happy though because in the meantime, there has been a fix that the community has put together for uh, ultra-wide support and also unlocking the frame rate. I've got another video if you want to check that out showing you how to do those things. So I'm going to be playing this at 34, 40, 14, 40 ultra wide and on my 144 hertz monitor, though I probably will not hit 144. I, in my testing, it was closer to 100, but better than 60. Uh, I'm going to create a character here, though I think I'll skip ahead and just uh, show you my final loadout and then we're going to get started. So let's go ahead and jump ahead. Okay, so. I put some thought into the character I wanted to play, and I looked at a couple of um, build guides out there. Initially, I was thinking like Vagabond. It seemed like a good starter for someone who doesn't have a ton of experience in the Souls Borns game. I've got some, but not a huge amount. But in the end, I think I'm going to go with the Confessor. It's similar. It's got that uh, shield that will block 100% of the damage, but it also comes with the ability to do um, incantations, which are like heals and uh, damaging spells of the like faith variety uh, you get a uh, sword you get a shield you get the casting item and uh, what is that a torch you get a lot of cool classes though overall I don't see where you could really go wrong um, the samurai looks like a lot of fun that was very tempting but I wanted something with a little bit more magic the prisoner is a good alternative if you want to go with more of the um, intelligence based arcane based uh, casting versus the uh, faith based face casting. The main thing that ended up drawing me to it was watching some videos of how the characters actually looked. And I just love the way the confessor, the robes, they, they look like a rogue, like a caster rogue. Um, just really co cool combination. So that's what I'm gonna go with. And then... I am playing this with a controller. The mouse and keyboard just was very awkwardly set up by default. Um, and I didn't really want to go through and, and change it all around, but just plugging in a, a 360 controller is working beautifully. So I know it's a pretty old controller. My PlayStation 4 remote oddly um, would not work. I'm not sure why that is. Gotta pick a confessor. Gotta pick a keepsake. So I read through what each of these do and i think i'm gonna go with the golden seed which will give you an additional use of your flask which is basically like your your health or mana potion so you'd get one additional use of uh, of your health potion be here for an hour Okay, after playing around, I got a pretty decent character, I think. Hair kind of looks like mine, similar color and style. I'm clearly not that muscular, but, you know, it's it's a wish fulfillment here. I just love the look, though, of the Confessor. That's one of the first things that drew me to it. Let's go ahead and get started. And you notice in black screens with this flawless uh, widescreen on, you get bars on the sides there. That's the only annoyance I found. Tell a story. The great Elden Ring was shattered. the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, 
claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. Horalu, chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion. The loathsome dung eater. And Sir Gideon Othmir. The all knowing. I have no idea what's going on. would again bless a tarnished of no renown cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. And we're in. Let's see. Yeah, getting 100 FPS. Another thing I do want to play with here, just briefly, is the field of view. You can do this live, so I'm Get this over here, so you can still see this. But I can mess with this. So the default is pulled in pretty close. I say like maybe do like twenty percent. You can also get rid of the vignetting on the edges. Oops. See how it's like dark darkened. Now it's not dark at the edge of the screen. See, dark. Not so dark. Let's just turn the vignetting off. Uh, actually, bump this up to max of 143, just below my max field of view. I think I got everything good. This is, <clears throat> I think, a pretty good setting. I might play around with this later, but we'll see how this goes. Okay, so let's get started. I've run through this intro um, a little bit before. I started out as a Vagabond just to um, start the game. I wanted to get some footage for, uh, uh, for my previous video, but I felt like the class was just a little too slow. I'm hoping this kind of... By default, the Vagabond is carrying heavy armor and like the roll speed and everything is just annoyingly slow. I love the way that cape looks. It's so sweet. See. Using the Xbox 360 controller here. I cannot get my PlayStation 4 remote to work for whatever reason, which is kind of frustrating. 
Get your block. Here. Okay. Shield bash. Block. Attack. It is a pretty game, especially with the ultra wide enabled and the. Yeah, I'm getting 120 ish FPS. I'm not going to leave that on. I just kind of want to see how it's running. I don't think there's anything to actually collect in this initial area. I read that you can defeat the monster up, up ahead, um, but that you don't get much for it and it's not easy, so I don't know that I'm going to really try that hard. I don't think there's anything else to find in this area. Other than this monstrosity. Lock on. And I'm already out of stamina. Yep, I'm dead. And that's the only annoying thing is when it goes to um, a black screen, the border that's normally black, you see the image still. Like normally this would all be black the entire screen and then it fades in um, at the next uh, cinematic. And the cinematics surprisingly do work in ultra wide. I'm actually pretty happy about that. Also, it seems like the FPS um, does not break anything. Like, some of these games, the game logic is tied to FPS. It doesn't seem like that's the case here, luckily. on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. Even if it does violate the Golden Order. I don't know if there's any way that you could enable ultra wide and not make those sections a little awkward because all it's doing is is they've got borders on the side of the screen and all the all this widescreen patch is doing is removing those borders but then there's nothing in the game logic telling it to go back to black i guess during those fade to black segments Got my flask and I got my extra one. And I am playing this offline. There's no way to play this patch, this ultra wide patch, um, with uh, with the online enabled. So that's one thing you will miss out on. You can't call on your buddies. You can't join others. Um, you can't, I think, read the messages left by other players. Take the plunge. Okay. So I think I've got to jump down there, but I'm just going to explore a bit. And there, I can definitely still feel um, a little bit of jitter. Like, I read that there is shader caching that happens. I jumped down there first. 
Oh, and there's a thing up there, too. How does one get up there? And I thought I had an extra flask, but I think you actually start with four resting at a site of grace will restore your HP, FP, and cleanse any status amounts if you also refill your secret flask. However, most of the enemies you defeated will be revived. You can find sites of grace by going where light converges. I think... Now I've got that extra use. Total number of flasks. You can decide how many. I think at the moment probably more HP is more useful. Though I do start with a little mini heal for uh, this character. I've got urgent heal and I've got assassin's approach. This I think makes yeah makes me silent, so it's like kind of stealthy, and then I think yeah I think I've already got it memorized if I'm understanding this correctly. This menu you can place items you've been carrying into the chest for storage, or take stored items out of chests. I don't think that matters right now. And I do have, you know, some experience with from games, with Soulborn kind of games. Ah, I hit the wrong button. Um, I should probably go restore that. But uh, I I've never put a huge amount of time in them. Like, I feel like every single one of them um, I've played at least a little bit of. But uh, none of them have I beaten. Like, I got pretty far into Bloodborne. That's probably the one that I've spent the most amount of time with. I got, I don't know, 10 to 15 hours in, and something drew me away from it. I'm... You can memorize sorceries, incantations, you must have a staff equipped. Okay, so, up. But I don't have any... I don't have any, like, offensive spells at the moment. He's like the slowest attacker. I've played a couple of the Dark Souls before. I think what happened is um, right around the time I started to check him out, I got married, I had a daughter, and like these games require a certain amount of time, and a toddler just does not really allow for the amount of time. So, like, I put a good amount of time into several of the games, and I kind of understand the basics, but I'm certainly no master. Each hand can be equipped with up to three armaments, allowing you to toggle between them. 
Okay, so that's how I can pull up my heal. I keep meaning to roll, and then I hit that. It's alright, I think I'll get to another one of those things real quick here. How did it say to sprint? Did I missed that? Okay, you just hold, I see. Graphically, it's it's quite nice looking. I got two arrows in me already. I don't think I have any other special moves at the moment. Oh, does it not want me to kill him? Okay, so you can get like a charge going on. Or you can... Jump attack. I think that's new. I don't think that was in the older ones. I was going to get like a boss. Still seeing a little bit of those like micro stutters. What strength? Okay, so that just brought me back where I started. I guess you could maybe skip over that. You see that stuttering? Turn that. Look at that little drop there. Interesting. I saw on Digital Foundry they did uh, some analysis, and it's basically like there's no computer, period, that can completely avoid those stutters and those drops. Unfortunately, it's just um, maybe a, uh, an issue inherent with the with the current patch or build. Does that refill my my stuff? 
Yeah, I got four again. Um. Sure. Do I have one? <laughs> I love that, like, oh shit, I don't have a key. I think um, one of the keepsakes you could have started with, with that key. And I am, again, playing this offline, so I think that has to do with the online uh, cooperative play. But I will not be able to utilize that. going to take me to the open world. I feel like I gotta break everything, but I don't think there's usually anything inside of them. Alright, I'm getting 70, 80 frames. That's a pretty game. That, I'm guessing, kind of like the, you know, the very basic tutorial. Saw something over here. Some eagles or something? Hi there. And it looks nice and ultra-wide. That... Field of view changed just a little bit. You get huge amount of scenery and, and world on your screen. So I should follow those. Use your map to check your current position as well as the terrain and surrounding structures. You can update the map with new information. Oh yes. Tarnish, shall we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. You can see when it zoomed in there, there was like a little bit of darkness on the borders. Luckily for you, however, there is me, Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with Grace? The golden light that gives life to you, Tarnished. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at time. That is the guidance of grace, a path that a Tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answer. It will lead you, Tarnished, to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Is that for summoning players, or I know you have like the ability to summon 
feel like I don't want to fight that guy just yet. Ophelia wants me to go this way. probably avoid that that is a big knight on a big horse with a big sword and this video is probably just going to be like the first 30 minutes or so uh, I'll I'll probably do another lengthier video I just kind of want to show how it runs in ultra wide how it looks And also performance, which it's like good, I'd say 80% of the time. And then you get some stuttering, which I think is related to that shader caching. Is that Santa Claus? You're a tarnished. I can see it. But I can also see that then why not purchase a little something? I am Kale, purveyor of fine goods. Goodbye for now. What is it? So the runes, I think, are both for leveling up, but also for buying goods. Get a correct pot. Required for crafting correct pot items. Crafting kit. I think I have to buy this thing. I saw some people saying, like, if you miss that, you're kind of screwed. Nice to do business. I don't think I have any of those things yet. Could I already upgrade my broadsword? Looks like I... Oh, no. Additional items required. Oh, I need another smithing stone. I gotcha. But now I have item crafting. Fire pot. Throw at enemies to inflict fire damage. I think I need the pot for that. Roped fire pot. Yeah, I think I'm going to need some goods before I do that. your map you can instantly travel to any sites of grace you've discovered however there are some dungeons and other areas you okay so you could fast travel at any time that's pretty cool that's one thing in dying light 2 which i just recently played through um fast traveling is locked off until very late in the game and even then it's very limited you have to go to specific places um well, that's not exactly true. You can fast travel to um, the main bases and the subways, but it's pretty limited. So it seems like it wants me to follow these streams of light. I read that it's fairly easy to miss some critical early stuff, like that crafting kit I, I saw someone say. like, Okay, so the wife and daughter are back from their errands. I am going to be... Ending my session for the moment, but I'll do probably another video tomorrow. Um, definitely intrigued by it. It is kind of unfortunate, some of the performance issues and 
just some of the oddities, the lack of ultra wide, the locked FPS, um, the weird controller issues and the lack of very good mouse and keyboard support out of the box. But, you know, the actual gameplay and the graphics and everything, it, it's a pretty game and it feels like it controls really well once you get it going. And now that the community has stepped up, got ultra wide running and FPS unlocked, that's pretty awesome. So I think I'll probably make this my next game I play through. I'd just be dying late too, actually, last night. So, um, yeah, I think I'll probably do some more coverage of this. If you think you might want to see a whole playthrough of a relative newcomer to the series, let me know, and maybe I'll do a full playthrough or at least a couple of videos. Um, thanks again for watching, everyone, and have a great night.